Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks channel. This is your host, Faisal Vatu from Santa Clara, California. I'm here at Qualcomm campus in Silicon Valley today. If you have used wireless technologies like cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc., you have used Qualcomm products in some shape or form. Over the past few decades, Qualcomm has been a leading supplier of wireless and compute platforms for devices such as smartphones, computers, tablets, etc. We are fortunate to have Rahul Patel as our guest today. Rahul is Senior Vice President and General Manager at Qualcomm. He's leading connectivity, broadband, and networking business unit. In today's show, we'll talk to Rahul and learn about innovations happening in connectivity and the new products Qualcomm has been building to revolutionize the future state of connectivity. So without any further delay, let's go and talk to Rahul and learn from his insights. Hello, Rahul. Hi, Welcome, Faisal. Welcome to our show. How are you doing today? Excellent. How about you? Good, good. Thank you. Great to have you here at the Qualcomm campus. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, so Rahul, there's a perception that uh, connectivity has become a commodity. It's, uh, it has become mainly a data pipe to provide connectivity to uh, cloud services and edge. Most of the innovations are happening up the chain at edge or cloud. How will you respond to it? Are there any innovations happening at the connectivity level bottoms up? Excellent question. Yes, uh, I think uh, the perception is definitely far from the reality. The reality is uh, the experience of the cloud and whatever you know, the new technologies like AI are going to deliver are going to be realized at the edge or in the device. And the last uh, connectivity capability that exists for the device is uh, Wi-Fi today and Bluetooth. Uh, the long pole in the experience is that untethered, unleashed, unwired experience that you want as a consumer on your device. And Wi-Fi definitely and Bluetooth are the answers for that uh, experience. So if you want to go unwired, untethered, you want to deliver the right consumer experience, I would say the quality of experience matters wirelessly. And there's a lot that is being done on connectivity to deliver quality of experience. Speeds and feeds is one thing. However, uh, certain robustness in connectivity, certain capabilities in connectivity for the application level experience is very valuable. And that's where the innovation in connectivity is bottom up. So Rahul, next generation of Wi-Fi technology, Wi-Fi 7 is here. Uh, I'm sure there are technical advantages Wi-Fi 7 has over Wi-Fi 6. But for our audience, can you explain that from an end consumer perspective, what value Wi-Fi 7 brings over Wi-Fi 6? Uh, this is an excellent question. It's not just another number, Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 7, in a nutshell, is a game changer. When it comes to uh, not only speeds and feeds, it is definitely a lot faster than Wi-Fi 6. It is also uh, something that delivers significant reduction in latency versus uh, Wi-Fi 6, improving the performance uh, of the experience uh, that you would need at the application level, especially when it comes to gaming, XR, VR, video intensive applications, 8K, multimedia, Dolby Digital, sound accompanying, you know, in this traffic. And so Wi-Fi 7 is speeds and feeds, latency, and working with uh, the spectrum of six gigahertz that otherwise is not uniformly available around the world, but delivering the benefits of uh, optimization on the spectrum in 2.4, 5, and six gigahertz through a couple of signature features. One is uh, multi-link operations, where you now have the equivalency of carrier aggregation from the cellular world, along with wider channels uh, being made available for the link that you're gonna work with across multiple you know, spectrums. So clearly, speeds and feeds and the robustness goes up. Uh, there's another 
uh, you know, signature feature called adaptive puncturing. A lot of technical jargon here, but mm -hmm. what it means is utilization of the medium in such a way that there's more robustness. So in from congested environments, mm -hmm. right, which is not only when you are living in a building with uh, your neighbors above you, below you, on the sides of you, but also in our homes today, there's like 20 some devices, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi devices, sources from the same wireless LAN you know, network. And so that complexity is going to increase. And so there's a lot of congestion. And so three things I would say are signature features of Wi-Fi. What is known as multi-link operation, uh, enabling you with uh, not only the um, 320 megahertz channels and 4K QAM capabilities, but supplementing with uh, carrier aggregation-like implementation, uh, adaptive puncturing, and the ability to kind of uh, deliver those experiences at the application level for like VR, XR, gaming, uh, multimedia, 8K traffic, with uh, you know Dolby Digital Sound capabilities, and so that's what Wi-Fi 7 brings, which uh, I believe is uh, somewhat revolutionary mm -hmm. versus the previous generations of Wi-Fi. You briefly touched on home connectivity. Uh, we have recently seen a lot of uh, press announcements by Qualcomm about 10G fiber gateway platform and Qualcomm's service-defined Wi-Fi technology. Uh, can you briefly tell us about? Uh, these products and their impact uh, because the claim is that these will revolutionize the home connectivity and connectivity in general. I ask you this because one of the assumption is that service providers will get rid of legacy cable networks and DSL networks and invest in fiber networks and we all know it's a slow process. So are these products only for niche markets or they can scale globally in your view? An excellent question. I think uh, the world of uh, broadband, the legacy world of broadband, wired broadband, as you alluded to, is around DSL, mm. or copper, and uh, cable. I think uh, as we move to multi-gigabits per second, asymmetric you know, implementations mm. uh, and needs in the, all the way back into the servers, our broadband connections have to evolve to support this uh, futuristic broadband connectivity. Clearly on the wide side, fiber is gaining traction. Um, you are seeing in 2023, fiber is give or take some, you know, 40% of, uh, already 40% of the worldwide uh, uh, subscriber base, broadband subscriber base. And uh, in 2028, it's expected to grow even more. What's uh, also very interesting is, you know, we are seeing based on research reports in the next five years, you know, fiber run rate for 10 gig fiber broadband is getting to close to 60%. So clearly the appetite for data, the appetite for experiences like working from home, schooling from home, entertaining from home, playing from home, you know, is gonna need this new age broadband. And uh, combining that with, uh, you know, the, uh, the quality of experience for that, the technology, that uh, you are going to realize the experiences over Wi-Fi. And so having this capability in Wi-Fi that, uh, you know, reacts to the service, Wi-Fi network that reacts to the service for the quality of experience is what we are also bringing along with our 10 gig fiber and, and it's called service defined Wi-Fi. The service is going to define the Wi-Fi connectivity uh, on multiple, you know, dimensions coming into your device. So clearly, you know, the combination cannot be, uh, uh, more uh, combined than it needs to be right now. Right? If you look at uh, how it is today, you know, the carrier will give you a box for modem and then you go have a separate Wi-Fi box and there's no coming together of these two platforms with, uh, you know, 10 gig fiber and service-defined Wi-Fi. You have this whole, you know, platform that brings uh, the quality of experience to the forefront as the uh, goal to be achieved at the device. We are also, by the way, the other big uh, technology that's uh, growing in broadband is 5G. Mm -hmm. It's doubling in the next five years from where it is. And so wherever it is uh, CapEx intensive and challenging to deploy fiber in the near term, it's gonna get, uh, you know, uh, 5G broadband. And there as well, Qualcomm is delivering 10 gigabits per second, uh, you know, uh, 5G uh, fixed wireless access gateways with Wi-Fi 7. So these products will be compatible with 5G? Not yes. just fiber? Yes. Oh, very good. Oh. One of the prerequisites for future wider scale adoption of VR and metaverse is, is the connectivity, which enables 
low latency, high data rates, but with cost-effective manner, right? In your view, how far are we from such connectivity solutions? Oh, as you know, I think Wi-Fi 7 is not yet uh, certified by Wi-Fi Alliance. It's imminent in the next three, four months. Um, having said that, Qualcomm has been in production on Wi-Fi 7 premium class products, I would mm. say. Um, in the last uh, year or so, you've seen phones launching, premium category phones launching with Wi-Fi 7. You've seen access point uh, uh, mesh devices, network devices launching with Wi-Fi 7. We also saw British Telecom, mm. consumer arm, um, EE, in UK talk about them going Wi-Fi 7 in 2024, charter communications mm -hmm. in United States going Wi-Fi 7, uh, many carriers mm -hmm. you know, adopting, uh, just, uh, you know, you'll see them rolling out in 2024. Um, so the infrastructure for Wi-Fi 7 is getting deployed. As Qualcomm, you know, we always skew map uh, down mm -hmm. with time. I would not be surprised if Qualcomm leads again, not only just in the premium tier, but also in skewing down Wi-Fi 7 mm. for better cost points uh, at uh, medium and entry level tiers in the next uh, few quarters. So, you know, cost is important, paramount uh, in our minds, and we are working towards uh, delivering products on those dimensions as well. Having said that, you know, not compromising. Yeah. Uh, the benefits of Wi-Fi 7, which is absolutely needed for the quality of experience uh, that the market needs. So you believe that uh, cost-reduced Wi-Fi 7 has all the ingredients to enable wide-scale adoption of VR? Yes. In fact, uh, uh, you know, I will go on to say we have never seen the level of momentum that we are seeing in Wi-Fi 7 with our products. We see today, and we have publicly talked about this, we see over 350 designs with Wi-Fi 7 already in flight, either launched or in the process of getting launched. We see over 160 Wi-Fi access infrastructure, you know, products either in design or in the process of getting uh, launched uh, or some have already launched with Wi-Fi 7. Uh, mesh products, uh, access point products, and we see 190 plus devices launching with Wi-Fi 7 and designing with Wi-Fi 7. These are all Qualcomm. Mm. I'm not even including our competitors or others who are providing Wi-Fi 7 solutions if they're they are ready to provide that. So we haven't seen this level of momentum this early uh, in the cycle, even before Wi-Fi 7 certification from Wi-Fi Alliance comes about. And so you can see uh, it's a show of you know, strength in the technology and the capabilities that the consumer is going to realize through the OEMs that bring this technology. And the OEMs see the value. In fact, uh, we saw uh, ByteDance slash Pico, Pico put a demo together where the latency on the XR and the gaming platforms has been reduced by 60%. Right, um, and so it's a game changer, Wi-Fi Seven. And so I, I really think uh, uh, it's exactly what the doctor ordered for <laughs> where we are going uh, with the new new age applications. So, Raul, in uh, cellular four G and five G, we saw that spectrum co convergence was uh, standardized. And for our audience, spectrum convergence means that cellular technologies can use. Uh, spectrum used by Wi-Fi and other technologies. So we we are anticipating that there will be even more momentum behind spectrum convergence in 6G. I would like to get your perspective on this. Should the Wi-Fi community be concerned about it? Well, I think uh, this is a fair question that's been raised by many. Uh, I don't believe Wi-Fi is going to get displaced anytime soon. Um, you know, Qualcomm definitely is uh, the Vatican, the Mecca, the Holy Grail for wireless communications. Uh, not many people know Wi-Fi is as important to Qualcomm as cellular is. Uh, we have shipped in the last decade over seven and a half billion Wi-Fi radios. That's uh, nearing the population yeah. on planet Earth. Wow. That's quite a bit of a volume. And so, that's remarkable. I, and just this is just Qualcomm, and others have done some too, right? And so, if you look at the bigger picture, uh, 
Wi-Fi is not going to be easily displaced. Its incumbency is well entrenched in the marketplace. Um, it's a consumer-facing uh, capability that the consumers have come to love and live with, and some, in many cases, cannot live with too. And so, I I do believe technology is going to be there to stay. And Qualcomm, I don't know about others, but Qualcomm has done quite a bit of work, research and development in doing certain things so that things like listen before talk and Qualcomm's own smart transmit technology are all implemented to kind of make sure Wi-Fi and uh, cellular you know, technologies on a going forward basis coexist because they both have a place in the ecosystem. One is definitely you know, WAN specific, uh, and the other one is very specific to land. If you want a complete untethered experience, both are going to be valuable to the consumer experience. They will coexist. Qualcomm is doing a lot of R&D to make sure, you know, that uh, dimension uh, does not get compromised. Uh, so Rahul, in uh, a lot of previous episodes of our show, I asked this question to startup founders. What is the recipe for success for a startup? But today with you, I have a different question. You have been a great example of someone who have excelled really well in a large company, large corporation. So what advice you will share with young professionals to, uh, to excel uh, or to do better in large organizations and big companies? Yeah, I think a couple of things. Uh, what I have learned in my experience is that I learn the most when I listen. And uh, it's very important to listen. Uh, take time, invest time in listening, because that's where majority of the learning comes. Uh, don't discount anybody, because um, everybody's got some perspective that adds value to the bigger picture. Um, number one is that. Number two is, I'll use an electrical engineering term. You need to you know, manage control, impedance match. Uh, you come into a large company, you are going to be up against a culture that is well entrenched, uh, very nicely, you know, settled and balanced in the company. Coming in as an individual, you have to tune your impotence to match with the culture. If you want to be successful, I think uh, you have to control the impotence match on your side so that it works well with the rest of the culture of the company. And then uh, somebody young coming in, uh, you know, make sure you realize it's not just about your own personal goals, it's also about the team, you know, and see how you can align your goals to the team's goals. Uh, and these are some basic fundamental things for success. And while you also do that, don't uh, stop uh, dreaming big, especially the young people, right? Uh, there's so much to be done. And Qualcomm, like companies, have a lot to offer in terms of uh, some form of research and development that uh, is measured, but at the same time, you know, uh, game-changing, basically. And so, you know, do these three or four things, and uh, I think uh, you'll be in a very happy place, which is very important to be in a company, any company, small or large. And uh, if you're in a happy place for yourself, you'll be successful. Well said, Rahul. Thank you very much for joining our show. Thank and you, Faisal. The audience would have benefited a lot from the insights you shared. My pleasure. Thank you, Faisal. Nice seeing you too.